It's likely that when you picture a combustion engine, images of a set of pistons in different configurations, such as in line, horizontally opposed, or in a V-shape, immediately come to mind. A piston-powered reciprocating engine has been the industry standard for cars for many years. However, not too long ago, it wasn't the only format available. The Wankel Rotary engine is a high-performance engine that features prominently in the history of Mazda's sports cars. Its lifespan may not have been particularly long, but the impact that it had on the world of engineering and car enthusiasm was profound. Mazda made its name in the world of performance cars in part thanks to the rotary engine. At one point, their identity was deeply tied to the engine format. So where did it go? Let's dive into the history of Mazda's rotaries, how they built some of the most iconic sports cars in history, and if there is any future for the engine format with the brilliant Japanese automaker. Backtracking, we find ourselves in the 1960s. The research and development team at Mazda is putting in a lot of effort to make the rotary commercially viable after receiving the necessary licensing. The 10A engine eventually emerged despite some significant flaws, such as shaky apex seals leaving marks on the housing. Without a place to put it, what use is an engine? As a result, Mazda unveiled the Cosmo 110S in 1967 which was the first mass-produced vehicle to use a dual-rotor Wankel engine. Not only did this two-door coupe have an impressive 110 horsepower, but it also had a stunning appearance. Even though the Cosmo wasn't exactly Mazda's biggest commercial hit, it was the start of something special. Their goal was to build a practical, sporty car with a rotary engine, and the company would go on to produce some of the most amazing engineering achievements in the years to come. From the beginning, the Wankel rotary engine generated controversy. The rotary engine was initially created by Felix Wankel as a superchogger for a motorcycle made by the German company NSU in the 1950s. Shortly after, NSU recognized that the rotary had the potential to function as an internal combustion engine and started working with Felix Wankel to develop an engine. Although the initial design was not viable, many, including Mazda, expressed interest in further developing it. The Wankel rotary engine has some disadvantages. Its design was based on its being a high-performance, high-revving engine, especially in the versions that went into Mazda vehicles. This put the engine under more consistent stress and necessitated strict maintenance by the owners. The little power plant had a lot of benefits, though. It was more space-efficient and compact, had the highest horsepower to displacement ratio of any engine, and had a straightforward design that made it almost impervious to catastrophic failure. Despite the Wankel rotary's ups and downs, its poor fuel efficiency ultimately led to its demise. Mazda was the only manufacturer to maintain rotary development over an extended period of time, but as emissions regulations became stricter, they were unable to maintain the power plant's viability. However, there are rumors of its return. It could be said that Mazda had a rotary engine obsession. No matter the cost, they were going to make it work. Because the rotary engine was the only reason one of the most famous sports cars ever existed, all car enthusiasts should be grateful it persisted. Mazda was eager for more after the Cosmo 110S helped the company establish itself as one that could create sports cars. They had to run rotary engines alongside conventional piston engines due to fuel efficiency regulations, which led to the development of a variety of RX cars. They eventually found a solution to the efficiency issue, giving rise to the most popular rotary car of all time, the legendary RX-7. The RX-7FD performed significantly better than average. The RX-7FD, which had a 1.3-litre twin turbocharged dual rotor engine, could accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 5.3 seconds. The car's top speed was close to 155 miles per hour, and it had 255 horsepower. The RX-7 was a beast of performance. The RX-7 was a marvel with some incredibly cutting-edge technology. Over the course of its existence, Mazda sold more than 810,000 examples of this amazing performance coupe. The Japanese company had realized its goal of popularizing the rotary. Unfortunately, the path that followed was not what they were hoping for. Mazda had to start over after discontinuing the RX-7 due to further tightening of the screws in terms of emissions laws. After the RX-7, they needed to build the next generation of rotary sports cars, and they had big shoes to fill. Mazda took an intriguing turn with the RX-8. 
nobody can deny that Mazda tried to be innovative. The RX-8 was a coupe with suicide doors and back seat. In 2003, it looked fantastically futuristic thanks to its wide body posture, and it was an absolute thrill to drive. Why, then, did the RX-8 fail to take off? The RX-8's engine, to put it bluntly, was not good. Every time it appeared that Mazda was getting close to improving the efficiency of its Wankel rotary engine, the government tightened the regulations on emissions. This meant that the RX-8's engine was less effective than those of its rivals, cost owners more in taxes as a result of its size and fuel guzzler nature, and lacked torque. The rotary engine was phased out by Mazda in 2010, after they acknowledged defeat. In 2012, production of the RX-8 came to an end. But Mazda is not giving up just yet. The rotary engine has been out of commission for a long time. With a resurgence in interest in JDM cars in the 1990s, its legend has only grown over time. People have urged Mazda to bring the rotary engine back, with reports of Mazda sports cars powered by rotary engines being refuted at every turn, it seemed unlikely that it would ever happen. But alas, it's coming back, just not in the way we had anticipated. Particularly in terms of their SUV lineup, Mazda has been killing it lately. Their vehicles have interiors that surpass your expectations given their price, impressive handling, and stylish designs. The MX-30 is Mazda's entry into the EV market as a result of emerging trends. Its pull range was the main drawback. The following MX-30 R EV, on the other hand, will be a plug-in hybrid that uses a rotary engine to essentially charge the SUV's batteries, as Mazda announced in January of this year. This may come as a disappointment to those who are hoping for a quad-rotor GT car, but it's still fantastic news. It indicates that Mazda hasn't given up and is still working on the rotary. Even the idea of the upcoming MX-5 using a hybrid rotary engine has been floated. We are generally happy to see the Wankel rotary engine making a comeback. It's wonderful to see Mazda once again at the forefront of automotive innovation. Innovation in the automotive industry is always a good thing. What makes Mazda the brand to watch this decade? As we approach the year's end of 2023, Many manufacturers have had a difficult couple of years. COVID had a significant impact on automobile manufacturers due to chip shortages, the economic crisis, and a lack of inventories. Even the best-selling companies, Toyota and GM, have suffered with many of these challenges. Despite major hurdles, one business has managed to distinguish itself as an up-and-comer. Mazda has made a name for itself and achieved unparalleled levels of popularity in the recent decade. They have established themselves as a top competitor, especially when compared to household names. Mazda is responsible for some of the most iconic cars of all time, and it has progressed from being one of the smaller Japanese brands, at least in the American market, to a true rival. They may not yet have the market share of larger organizations, but if they continue to develop and manufacture automobiles at the same level, they will. Mazda is quickly becoming a household name. With the continuous development of time, who knows what the future will bring? Nothing is set in stone. And as to how Mazda and the Wankel rotary engine will fare, only time can tell. Do you have any guesses about this new development? Let us know your thoughts in the comment box below. If you've watched up to this point, thank you so much. For more videos about EVs, Toyota, Tesla, Ford, and the most recent auto news, please consider subscribing to Tech Addicts.